Fortnite is the metaverse that we needed all along. Counter-Strike 2 is real and it's coming and Andy's craziness just knows no bounds. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet this Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. And we're gonna start off today talking about Halo Infinite because if you have a certain type of GPU, you can no longer play the game. It looks like certain 10 series cards are officially going the way of extinction when it comes to video games due to VRAM limitations. Officially, 343 industry has never supported anything with Halo Infinite that had less than four gigabytes of VRAM. However, one of the things that always happened was there was a launcher error, but you still were able to play the game. Not so with the latest update that has made the game unplayable for anybody who's rocking less than four gigabytes of VRAM. However, one of the things that's being brought up as like an issue with this is that they say that the minimum specifications in order to run Halo Infinite are a 1050 Ti with four gigabytes of VRAM. However, a 1063 gig can no longer play the game, and that is because it has three gigabytes of VRAM. So it, even though the core is faster than the 1060, it's not minimum enough. You have to have both of them fused together. And 343 Industries has not said why this is happening because it was always unofficially supported. But with the latest update, it's not quite clear what changed. Are they going to fix it? What's going on? The game hasn't really updated a whole lot where it seems like that would be necessitated in order to make sure that it can run effectively on systems. It seems like it just was updated and it broke a lot of people's hearts. All six people who have a 1063 gig who are still enjoying Halo Infinite. Let me know if this affects you down below in those comments. But the biggest update that's coming in games is the fact that Epic Games had a whole Unreal Day where they kind of went over the state of Unreal Engine. And one of the biggest things that they are implementing is an Unreal Editor for Fortnite, which when I first heard of this, I was like, so you could like edit your video game clips, but no, it's a little bit more than that. It allows people who want to develop video games to actually implement anything they want in Unreal Engine 5 and then essentially just bring that over to Fortnite. So you have to have the Unreal Editor, which is now available on Epic Games right now, but you also have to have Fortnite and you can merge the two together to create the wild worlds that are not actually Fortnite, but are in the Fortnite game, complete with rigging and textures, and you can develop essentially whatever you want. So it looks like Fortnite is having their Roblox moment where they are actually bringing out a tool that's going to allow game developers to create a whole host of different games and game genres within the singular game. This appears to be the vision that they're going for. This is what Zuckerberg wants to be the platform that everybody's hosting things on. Roblox has already gotten away with it. Fortnite, I do think, has all of the momentum and the necessary steps to make this happen, especially with how robust of a tool Unreal Engine is. It's going to be pretty good to see. I'm curious to see how far this is going to go. I think this is a huge update that just probably is going to fly under the radar until people are making millions of dollars a day off of their video games that they uploaded to Fortnite and didn't actually have a full release, which Epic Games wants to make that a bit of a more affordable reality because they're changing their creator economy setup, having a creator economy 2.0 pool, which will give 40% of net revenue back to eligible creators who publish games in Fortnite. So this is different than their 5% revenue share that they had if you bought like things like Fortnite skins in the video game, but now it's gonna be a full 40% going to people who have games that are actually in Fortnite, which seems to be a pretty high incentive, could potentially bring a whole lot of people over from different places. I could see a lot of businesses just being built off of the fact that they're a Fortnite game. They're not available on Steam or nowhere else. They're just a Fortnite game and that's what the kids play, but that's where the money goes. Kyler, are you excited for this? Fortnite, Fortnite. We like Fortnite. Do you want to chug jug with me? Chug jug. I want to go to Tilted. Uh, tomatoes. It's not the only update that Epic Games had with Unreal Engine. They showed off their 5.2 demo, which demonstrated a few new capabilities it's going to have, such as new foliage and procedural world building that they're going to be implementing. And a lot of the Unreal Engine 5.1, 5.0 demonstrations that they've had have been just kind of deserted, barren wasteland. So this updated one that shows off foliage and a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on does appear to be a new breath of fresh air, as you can imagine. Also, just different ways that it can interact with textures, as you can see this Rivian car 
has a nice opal shiny design underneath because of the way it handles new things. In case you're interested in developing with Unreal Engine 5.2, you can check out the link in the video description and it'll give you more details. And hopefully Reese has some details on UFD deals for us. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I'm Reese. these are deals, let's get into it. Starting off with the Cooler Master MM720, this lightweight honeycomb gaming mouse is going for only $18.99, which is $34 off or 64% off. And then secondly, we have the HP X27Q. This 27 inch 1440p, 165 hertz IPS display features FreeSync and HDR 400. It's going for only $209.99, which is $90 off or 30% off. And those are the deals for today. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm hand you off back to bed for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thank you, friend. But you know what's a better deal than whatever you said, regardless of how good of a deal it is? Free. Free is always good. And that's exactly what's happening with Counter-Strike 2 because it is official. It is real. And it wasn't just rumors with Valve announcing Counter-Strike 2 will be coming out this summer. They're currently trying to do some beta testing with people who have played the game for quite some many hours. And they talked about a few things that they're going to be implementing with regards to Counter-Strike 2. There's going to be a threefold strategy in terms of touchstone, which means they're not going to touch anything, just kind of give it a few upgrades here and there in terms of lighting and readability. In specific maps, upgrades going to mean that they're going to take advantage of the Source 2's enhanced lighting pipeline to create new situations in that. And then lastly, they're going to overhaul a handful of levels to make sure that it's a completely new experience. Also talking about gameplay enhancements, they're going to change how smoke grenades work with it being an actual volumetric interactable situation in the video game. If you actually shoot, it moves through the fog. It's a whole new way of playing the video game. And they're also updating the server architecture to support a sub tick update, which will allegedly make it so that as soon as you press anything, it is registered by the server and everything will feel super responsive and be the most responsive Counter-Strike game that's ever come out. It's coming out as a free update to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which is already free. It you maybe had to pay $15 for it back in the day, but all of your cosmetics and everything will carry over to Counter-Strike 2, which will just be better looking. It's supposed to be a graphical enhancement, a performance enhancement, as well as a gameplay enhancement, and seems to be at least a better strategy than Overwatch 2 in my mind. Kyler, what do you think? You like Overwatch 2? I like it, but it's not real. Overwatch 2 is not real. It's Overwatch 1. Do you think Counter-Strike 2 is new? Is real? Okay. Counter-Strike's not the only thing getting an update. Enreal announcing that their Air Glasses, which we've had as a sponsor here on UFD Tech at some places, is actually getting a unique upgrade for Windows because they've been found that they are used on Windows PCs quite a bit, especially if you have the HDMI adapter that allows you to plug directly into the glasses. It does work on Windows in that way, but they are going to be rolling out the Nebula app for Windows, which will allow you to have more augmented reality interactability, whereas currently, if you plug it into an HDMI device, there's no degree of freedom. It doesn't track your head. It's basically just a giant projector screen on your glasses, which is fun, which is good. I like that. But this will make it so that it can track your head movements. You can't lean in or out or moving through space, but it will have other tracking. And additionally, it's going to have 21 by 9 support to make it so that you have an ultra wide wraparound while you're in this augmented reality space. It's a nice update to something that I think a lot of people are enjoying. Let me know if you like that down below in the comments. And I like big numbers. I can't lie. They, they make me very happy. Kyler, you like big numbers? Like, how high? Uh, over a thousand. That's pretty big. It's pretty big, especially if it's a real thing, right? And that's exactly what AMD is going to be giving us when it comes to 3D vCache, because specs are being found out about their Genoa X processors, which just have an obscene just a ridiculous amount of 3D vCache. So the 7950X3D already has a lot. It has 128 megabytes of L3 cache, which has been usable in gaming. But these server chips, the Genoa X, are supposed to have over a gigabyte of L3 cache. Now about 384 megabytes of that will be coming from the actual cores, which have normal L3 cache. But then about double of that, 768 megabytes are gonna come from the 3D vCache stacks that are supposed to be on this, which would mean with all of the cache combined, you're looking at 1.2 gigabytes of usable cache, including L1, L2, and L3 on these chips, which is about two and a half times higher than it is currently on the server chips that AMD has. And you can see the spec sheet right here showing off 96 cores, 400 watt TDP, absolutely insane numbers. They're supposed to be coming in the middle part of this year. These are going to be insane chips. I do question though, what server 
applications need 3D V cache, especially with a lot of the reports that are coming out from reviewers who are testing the 7950X 3D in terms of gaming. It's finding that most applications aren't using them unless they're in a gaming scenario. What are these Genoa X servers doing that requires 3D V cache? What is this going to accelerate, deal with, optimize? I want to know more specifics on that because I don't think AMD would be releasing this if they didn't have a workflow in mind for that. So I'm curious to know what specifically are they going to say this is going to unlock. But over a gigabyte of L3 cache per socket. You could buy two of these, you got 192 cores over for two gigabytes of L3 cache. Those numbers are big. Kyler, the numbers go up. Oh my goodness, line goes up. Line goes up, numbers increase, Brett gets happier until I'm deceased. I will see you guys back here for more hot news tomorrow.